boy, I am like in deep right now. I am down the rabbit hole. You've been there before, right? Yes. Where like all of a sudden you're doing something, you're like, Jesus, I have, oh man, it is. Wow. Bro, I am like stunned right now with what I'm looking up. And I it's it's for an episode later, but oh man. What, Lisa Ann retiring? I just wish I don't even know who that is. Yeah, okay. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. Rapid Fire. Ah, yes, Rapid Fire. I would love, because we got a lot of questions we got some uh, familiar names in there. Yeah, the nation always steps up, man. Yes, they always step up. All right, we're going to work top to bottom. These are just in whatever order you two put them in. All right, what so, do we decide on now? You're going to, we're going to, we're going to flip flop? Yeah, we'll alternate. Or I'll read because that's unsafe if you do. True. It's safe if I read if I'm in the passenger seat. Well, so. oh, you're also a math teacher, so. Yes. E -W -W. E -W -W. Yes. E -W -W. yes. You look at your X and wonder why. Okay, go ahead. Question. What? All right. Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Can you flip a coin. That's probably a bad idea. Okay. All right. Uh, rock paper scissors. Sure. Okay. Ready? Oh, be here now, but... Go ahead. Tebow, nineteen ninety-seven. All right. We should. Woo. All right. Let's throw that one back. Uh, what's up with that Vanessa? It feels like he hasn't done anything since week two. That's true. His snap count is his snap count has been dwindling over weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, but you know, I have Vanessa kind of flashed, and then I think that's just what it was. It was early season flash. I was never super high on Vanessa. I know everybody loved it, but I mean, you you drafted Boogie Basham and Greg so I think the intent is Basham's likely going to be the long term starter as opposed to Vanessa. Vanessa is sort of a linebacker playing defense man to me, like a slow linebacker. Oh, well, yeah. Epineza seems more of a McDermott draft pick than a Frazier draft pick. Well, that sounds like an episode later, doesn't it? <laughs> Evan Anderson, how big will it be getting Star back from the C-19 list uh, to help the loss of Trey White? You need the D-line to show up right now. That sounds like an episode. That sounds uh, like an episode? <laughs> The, the way that it works is obviously Star Wars is going to help you a little bit more in the run game. He's going to be taking up some double teams, so your pass rush can get there a little bit faster, which will help with secondary. So, um, Star being in the lineup benefits Rousseau, uh, Addison, Hughes, a lot of those edge rusher guys have to get to the quarterback, along with Oliver, who's starting to come into his own, which will take some pressure off of that secondary. Um, even with Trey White being out, I mean, you got Frazier. They're in good hands as of right now, especially with the best, best, best safety tandem in the NFL. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's huge if you get the start back. So. Okay. Raphael, from the current O line roster, who do you guys keep in the 2022 season? Well, you're keeping Dawkins because you kind of have to. You're going to keep Darrell Williams up. I still believe that Darrell Williams is trade made 101. Like a tackle at $10 million a year is trade made 101. Even an average NFL tackle at $10 million a year is trade made 101. To the NFC. I'm not trading the NFC. I don't care where he goes. It's really? Okay. No, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, Morris, I would imagine, is still here because I just don't see Buffalo being able to rebuild the interior of their line because you know they need two guards. They're not going to do two guards in a second. Right. I'm right. taking so I'm taking the center in the third round next year. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying I wouldn't add one. I would just re oh, imagine yeah. they're gonna yeah. they're gonna retain Morris. Uh, outside of that, you two guards are turnstile. You're gonna go with whatever you can get. I, I think you're looking at your big three, Morris and your two tackles. And, yeah. and the fact of the matter, Spencer Brown is right now your tackle. I still think you retain Daryl Williams because at his contract level, 
there's no reason to get rid of him. Yeah. But I do think Spencer Brown makes him, you know, trade him. Well, unless you want to keep four of the line and put him in, leave him at guard. You, you sure could. I mean, you sure could. Ten million dollars to get guards a little crazy. Still yeah. Affordable. Yeah, it's you know you're not paying Allen that big money next year yet either. So I think you're okay. All right, next question. Uh, from Corey Phone, how many push-ups can Mario do with Paul on his back? We actually talked about this in the behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> well, the equatable, the dad thing is, I weigh as much as your two kids. Yes. So, if your two kids jumped on your back, how many push-ups could you do? 30. That is crazy to me. Do you know what I would look like at 30 push-ups with just gravity on my side? <laughs> I have to roll to the side of my upper body so weak I have to roll to my side to get out of bed in the morning. The unfortunate part about it is I'm not I'm not a huge bench guy. I have really long limbs. Like bench and squats I detest. Is that why you're always so sensitive about when tackles with thirty eight inch arms put up like eighteen on the bench? You're like, look at the size look look at the arm length. I, I, I'm like, I am empathetic <laughs> to those gentlemen, um, and I think it's really <laughs> that's tough though. I mean, when you have those guys that, in, in the you have those guys in the weight room that have to move the bar like six inches. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Like, all right, man, congratulations. <laughs> in hindsight, Mal Davis's combine should not have been as impressive. He had T Rex arms. He does. He had T Rex arms. Yes. Especially right. when he was a receiver. Alligator arms. <laughs> that is a great movie, but Meet the, Meet the Robinsons, great yes. movie. Daniel Garis, what moves, if any, do the Bills make at quarterback? That's that's an episode, right? We corner, just, corner, corner. I think that gets looped into an episode. We're gonna end up talking. We're gonna about title that with Daniel. Right. Thank right. you, Daniel. Appreciate that. Also, Daniel, I'll just take the, the follow up. How many tears have you two cried over Trey's knee? Not as many as you think. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, initially I was really upset. Because I was pretty convinced that we it wasn't an ACL team. I looked at it, I was like, ah, man, he's it never had knee injury ACL. issues. I thought it was just going to be an MCL sprain. So I was really hopeful. So I was upset right away. But after a while, you know, it's, it's the season. I love Trey. It's not like he's not going to be here. I just hope he's ready for training. Stephen Gorey, Gorney, um, better free agent option to fill in at the need uh, for CB. Daryl William or Daryl Worley or Brett the Hitman Hart. I mean, you can't go wrong with the best there is, the best there was, and the best there will be. Have you seen Brett the Hitman Hart walk recently? But he's 55 right now. I think he might be a little tough in man-to-man -to -man coverage. I think he'd be all right in zone <laughs> because. Uh, He's sharpshooting a couple of guys, <laughs> but uh, Worley is an interesting, interesting name that we're going to bring up in our cornerback episode as well. But I mean, these are some great, these are some great questions. I love it. All right, but always go with the hit. Uh, I'll give you the follow up then. Right. Do the Bills move Levi to Trey's spot or Jane Jackson or safety? Do they bring in safety help? That's from Daniel Harris. Again, all things that follow that corner episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, without divulging too much, I mean, you've seen Micah Hyde play corner in Green Bay. Yeah. There's a reason he's in Buffalo. Yeah. He plays in Buffalo. Um, you could try to rotate the position where, um, I mean, I think it will depend on volume of the targets. Yeah. Who you're one and who you're two. So, I mean, right. do you just stick Dan Jackson on the number one receiver? Do you just stick Levi Wallace on the number one? Those guys, I mean – for me, Dean Jackson is more of a man coverage guy than Levi is. Right. Levi has completely transformed himself into a zone corner, which is the overall philosophy of right. the Bills. But, I mean, I guess it will depend on how they match them up. Personally, I would I would want to see Dean Jackson in more of a man, but he seems like he's on an island trying to learn this. Well, I mean, again, not to go into it too much, but I think this is one very matchup dependent, right? Yes. Like, you're not, there's no CB1 anymore. There's not. It's You're going to get the best guy that you are going to match up the best against. Yeah. But I think there is an argument to be made that Dane Jackson will be leaned on more solely because I think the Bills are going to continue to have to bring pressure in 
corner to offset the loss of Trey Mack. So, I mean, from a skill set standpoint, Dean Jackson should match rate into that a little bit better than Levi, but I think there's an argument to be made. Miguel, who is your MVP so far this season? Why don't we both go on this one? Uh, MVP so far for me, Matt Breida. Love him. It's about damn time. He averaged 2.9 yards a carry last game. Don't care. Don't care. Changes the offense. Changes the offense. It's right it's now. It's Matt very Breida's interesting playing. when they instituted a new change on the offense they didn't have last year. There's, there's a huh. bit, there's kind of a pickup. Hmm. Sanders, Rita. You're absolutely right. Sanders was super impactful the first Spencer three games. Spencer Brown. Yep. Spencer Brown super impactful the first three games. Gee, yeah. it's almost like they're doing something that uh, nobody saw before. MVP. You can do it. I, I'll go two, twofold. Okay. Excellent. Damn, I got a lot to pick from. I love Poyer and Hyde. Either one of those guys. You got to pick one though. Uh. We may we may say that it was Trey, depending on how the next three games, next three four games are. Yeah, you could say Tremaine because of how Jonathan Taylor was a manimal. How much yeah. does Tremaine? But overall, I like MVP is I'm going to give it to Teron Johnson. I like that. I That's like a good Toronto. one. I really give it to Brita just because I can right I now. I yeah. I got to give it to Jackson after he has two picks in the team. Right. <laughs> Uh, also, was within that same question, keys to winning against the Pats next Monday. So down the road a little bit. Am I a sellout if I say turnovers? No, not at all. Because what? It's, when they lose the turnover battle, they're scoring 17 points a game. When they yeah. win it, they're scoring 40 or something like that. Yeah, when they get two or less turnovers, they were averaging 17 points a game. Prior, this is whether they won or lost. Yeah. Prior to the last week's game. I didn't rerun the numbers from last night, last week's game. I'm sure they only got only a one turnover, so I'm sure that 17 points will go up a little bit. But yeah. uh, either way, it's time now for the offense to actually take over the game. Mm-hmm. They've been really dependent on defense. They're averaging like 38 points when they get two or more turnovers. Um, so it's time for the offense to actually take over the game. Put your big boy pants on. Uh, Raphael, this one's for you. Is Tremaine Edmonds our long-term middle linebacker, leader of the defense, or should we take another shot in the draft? Or is there any way we can make a move for Khalil Mack? Khalil Mack's not an inside linebacker. I think that's just no. sort of an, an ask. Because you're probably losing Jerry. You're probably losing Mario next season. Would you circumvent it by redrafting that position with three picks in the last two years? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you got Boogie, AJ, and uh, Rousseau. Um, if you – depends. Where do you want to have your impact player? Do you want to have it in the middle or do you want to have it on your edge? You know, the edge, you can run away from him. Right. You can't run away from him where he is right now. No. Uh, I think the, the Jonathan Taylor game may have solidified his contract. He's going to be the first $100 million quarterback, guys. My bad. Linebacker. Yeah, yeah. linebacker. I know he's first so, hundred so used to say – He's going to be the first $100 million linebacker. Well, that's dependent on, I mean, this is it's going out on a limb here. This is dependent upon whether you think Matt Milano could be your middle linebacker. If you think Matt Milano could be your inside linebacker, middle, I'm sorry, middle, it's a four. Then, okay, you can move on from Jermaine Edmonds. But the guy's getting up for a second contract he's when certain guys get drafted. Yeah, it's 23. You can't replace that kind of experience at no. 23 years old. No. I, um, I say you sign. Matt Mallory, evaluate Allen at the halfway mark. Gee, this sounds like an episode. How do we move on without Trey? Gee, that uh, sounds like its own episode. Who's that, Mallory? Mallory. Uh, thank you it. for our episode. Yeah, thank you for all of our content this week. Daniel Garries, we're going to rapid fire this one. Uh, we'll both do it. Ready? Mm-hmm. Remaining schedule. Pats, win or loss. I got him going four and two. Lose it to the Pats and the Bucks. Okay. Let me just wrap it for that. Because I thought okay. it was I think they'll beat the Pats. I think they'll beat, some, I think beat they'll the Pats split. on Monday. Yeah. I think they will probably lose to the Bucks. Yeah. The secondary is going to bend on that. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll beat the Panthers. What a test, though. Right. The comeback game against the Pats, it's dangerous because there's three games afterwards, right? There's the Bucks and the well, Panthers, so that's, that's a two-game split. So I do think you probably drop the last one to the Patriots, but I think you go two and two. Well, the, 
Yeah. Well, first the first difference game. with it is that the Bills played a Thursday Falcons, game. Yeah, they're going to win both those. Falcons and Jets, yes. Well, I, <laughs> at this point, Paul, I don't think anything's a guarantee at this point anymore. I know it's Falcons and Jets. I know. Okay, but the Jags. Okay, can I just bring that up? All you got to do is score touchdowns, baby. <laughs> You know right. what? If I'm Belichick, you know what I'm doing? Huh. Just for that simple reason alone. Saturday. Or no, Friday night. You gotta sign a corner. I'm signing a corner off the Buffalo Bills practice squad. Why wouldn't you? Why not? You gotta go for Give me division. everything you have. Right yeah. Now. You can go on our 53 and get a Well, they can decline that. They can decline it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hugo 2017 is the defense due for a massive regression with the loss of trade. If not, who will step up the most out of our depth guys? I'm gonna say no. Okay. We talked about this. I'm not going to talk about it again. Just... Okay. Yeah, Joseph I Rodriguez think. actually commented on that and said, I would say no because we have studs and quarterbacks. Really Corner. believing in that depth. Really believing in that depth. I don't know about stud. Hey, listen, comment's a comment. Uh, let's see here. Jack me. Damn it. Oh, uh, we almost read it. No, well, I, that's his name. Jack. Um... Uh, do we think the Bills will get a dome or an open field? Or are we going to go combination? You know what? I know it's our. I know we have this public platform we have to talk about certain things. Right. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I really don't care. I mean, you have guys. <clears throat> if Allen's going to keep throwing 50 times a game, would it be more beneficial to have a dome? Absolutely. But I don't care. I look at it this way, right? <laughs> I think you need to build a facility at the money it's going to cost that can be utilized multiple times in the year and to only use it a maximum of 20 times a season uh, only on Sundays seems silly to me right you're talking about concerts and right exactly events. if you're going to build a yeah. new if you're going to build a new facility you have to make sure that it's usable in December January February and March right cuz otherwise you're just chopping the legs out on your investment so i i actually like the i like what Dallas did they have the open air. They have a. They have a. They can close it if they need to. I. I like what Dallas still. I. So, I'd be down with that. Well, no. Let me ask you this. Now. There's a follow up. Downtown or where it currently is. Oh God, no! Don't put it in downtown. I know. Although I will say that it would be quite the booming business to set up your own beer delivery in the parking ramps. You get some remote control cars or some drones, and then people will order beer. And then you can just deliver it to them throughout the parking ramp on remote control cars or uh, or drones. Those are going to get stolen. Oh, yeah. And reprogrammed for somebody else. <laughs> you know how many pictures of people's booty holes you'd see? Oh, my God. Paul. Uh, Dana Vari, Singletary or Breida the rest of the way? Or both. Or do we see Zach Moss again? Uh... We're going to see Zach Moss again. They're not going to sit in the whole season. Oh, yeah. They'll rotate him. I, I like the element Rita brings. As, I don't know, what did we say it four months ago? What did you say it four months ago? He brings a different element to your backfield yep. that you don't have, that you didn't have last year. So why not? When teams try to adjust to that, that's when you, you put Singletary and Moss in. Last one. Yep. Dennis, with so many high draft picks used on the D-line, is this a source of potential trade deals for the Bills after the season ends? With the Bills' run defense continuing, continuously floundering, is Star too unreliable? He's missed so many games, uh, and yeah. he is a liability to the run deep and is he a liability for the, to the run defense week after week? I don't. I think it's the other way around. I think he, he bolsters your run defense. I think what make what being a McDermott probably did. Or probably thought of looking at um, Jefferson's contract, looking at Jordan Phillips's contract that they ended up getting, Shaq Lawson's contract. You know, when those guys leave, this is where the compensatory picks come in. Right. So with Josh Allen signing his deal in a couple of years from now, and Tremaine Edmonds about to sign his deal, the Bills don't won't really have a lot of money to move in free agency. So what they're going to do is they're going to try to. When they sign these guys to one, two-year deals, prove-it deals, and these guys sign big contracts somewhere else, if the Bills don't sign similar type <clears throat> contracts to their team, then they're going to get compensatory picks. Yep. So what better way and cheapest way to build your team than to get those third-round compensatory picks back to fill your roster? I think that's a great point. That's a great point. You know, and I think you kind of moneyball it a little bit. Right? That is, when you that look is. at When you look at Star, 
like just as an example, right? The, the official Moneyball breakdown, if you if you guys to put it simply, right? Having you know, if you've never read the book, never seen the movie, yeah. Um, the uh, Oakland Athletics lost Jason Giambi to the Yankees, mm-hmm. right? And Jason Giambi was an on base monster, right? Generated a ton of runs, uh, both by walking and by hitting bombs, right? So instead of them trying to replace him, what they did was they just replicated his production, but across multiple positions, right? Mm -hmm. So they went and found guys that just got on base all the time. Didn't matter how they got on base, just Mm -hmm. got on base all the time. And they built their roster on that. Well, with Star, Star is your Giambi, right? When he's in the lineup, your defense is significantly better. When he's not in the lineup, they're using a combination of Justin Zimmer, who unfortunately is not going to be you know, we're not going to see him anytime soon. Uh, Harry Phillips, right? They tr- they thought Vernon Butler was going to be a help there. And obviously, that hasn't panned out. But that's what they tried to do is knowing that Star ran the risk of being unreliable. Mm-hmm. You do what you can to try and replicate that production. And you just have to be selective with when you use them, right? Um, I don't think anybody expected Ed Oliver to play the way he is without Star. But he was a first round. He was, you know, he was first round draft pick for a reason. So, who are the three guys that you would, you would ballpark for Lorenzo? Of the positions that he used to? Ah, uh, you son of a gun. Because the, the two I got are Klein and, and Mikhevich. Yeah. So, who would be the down? Epineza? I guess. So, those are the three roles? Yeah, because to, to walk that back, right? Lorenzo Alexander okay, often yeah. played three roles on the defense. He did. He, he had, he had his hand teams. in the dirt. He yeah. was an outside linebacker, or he played special teams. Well. Right. So, yeah. Yep. So when they lost Lorenzo, that was a utility knife. That saved your roster spot. It did. But what did you do? You signed Tyler McCavich, which was, at, from a special team standpoint, a, a very a fine signing. No yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. From a linebacker perspective, I mean, AJ Klein probably fits that next mold, right? Not so exactly, but you're, you need a then, linebacker. Right, and losing Lorenzo, you did end up drafting A.J. Vanessa, which at the time was need. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Just, just to kind of make a comparison of, of the money ball. And, and Woo! Woo! We made it. <laughs> we made it. Hey, fun. thanks to Mr. Rogers Holmes for sponsoring this episode. Uh, if you're ever looking to relocate or maybe just buy investment property, MrRogersHolmes.com. Thank you.